The Modern Maker podcast hosted the Rockler Bentwood Challenge to the maker community. My entry was three personalized notebook covers for Ben, Chris and Mike by using a technique called Living Hinges. In this video, I will go over the design process. If you're interested, stick around. Welcome back to Notion Lab everyone, my name is Jay. This is the first episode of a series called By Design that I'm launching on the channel where I showcase the design process of the things that I create and other creations that are interesting. In this episode, we will cover living hinges. Let's take a closer look at what a living hinge is. It's a series of patterns cut in a specific way to make a material like wood flexible. These are created by a maker called Obrary and is released under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license, meaning they are free to use and download. I'm a big fan of the Creative Commons, so that's a plus in my book. Link will be in the description. The different patterns have a different level of flexibilities and strength. A maker on YouTube has done a few tests comparing the different living hinges for flexibility. I will leave that link in the description as well. For my project, I will be using the straight pattern due to its simplicity. I am using Inkscape to create the digital vector files to be cut on a laser. Inkscape is a free and open source alternative to Adobe Illustrator. The notebooks are roughly 160 by 210 millimeters. In Inkscape, I created a plain box by clicking this icon and making sure it has no fill, only a stroke. In the top left of Inkscape, click Object and select Fill and Stroke. In most lasers, the color red is for cutting and the color black is for engraving. So the stroke needs to be red. In the upper center, we can enter the size of the box. Make sure the unlock icon is unlocked and the units are set to millimeters and not pixels. Since this is a cover and will fold around the notepads, we need to make the box more than twice the width of the notebook and slightly taller too. I chose 216 millimeters high and 342 wide. I personally think a rounded corner looks better, so let's add it. Click the box icon again and drag that little circle down a bit. You might need to zoom in to see it properly. Now it's time to work on the hinge. As stated earlier, I chose the straight line hinge for this project and there is an Inkscape extension available to make that process easier. I will leave links down below. Navigate to it and click this button to download. It's a zip file so we need to unzip and copy two files to Inkscape's extension folder. The easiest way to locate that folder is to go to Edit, Preferences, and look for User Extensions. I am using a Mac and I can copy that path and open a Finder window, click Go, go to Folder, and Paste to go to that folder. We need to copy these two files to that folder. Afterwards, we need to quit and relaunch Inkscape. And under Extensions, Render, we should see the living hinge extension there. I needed to determine how wide my hinges should be. With the notebook open and laid flat, I measured the spine and 34mm seems like a good start. The extension requires us to have a box created to fit the hinges in, so we can create a box that is 34mm wide by 216 high. This box does not need a rounded corner. We can zoom in closer to get a better look. Make sure to switch back to the selection tool and click the box. Under extensions, render, click living hinge. There are a few settings we can change. Click the live preview checkbox and if we change the settings, we will see the changes on screen. I won't go too in depth on these settings, but generally increasing the default numbers will make the living hinge less flexible and vice versa. You can play with the settings, but honestly the defaults are good enough. The only changes I made was to set the cut length to 35mm instead of 19. Click apply and close. We no longer need that box, so delete it. Now we can select both items and under object, click align and distribute. Click on these two icons to center the hinge to both vertical and horizontal of our box. Next, we can group under object group. Let's work on the graphic. 
I headed over to Modern Build's website and downloaded a copy of the logo and load it into Inkscape by clicking File and Import. We need to convert that image into a vector. Make sure the image is selected and click Path, Trace Bitmap. Since we have a great quality image from Modern Builds, we don't need to change any settings here. Just click OK and the trace will begin over the original. It should only take a moment. We can drag the trace and delete the image. The easiest way to tell the difference is to click on one of the items and look towards the bottom left of Inkscape. The trace will be a path and the original will say image. Delete the image and keep the path. Now we need to resize the image to fit. 100 by 100 millimeters look good and I played with the position until I was satisfied. The graphic needs to be on the left hand side. I group one more time and save the file. I am using Lightburn as my laser software. I made a video covering the basics if you are a beginner. If you are interested, click the icon in the top right. I imported the design by dragging and dropping. I wanted to add a bit of interest to the cover by cutting part of the logo and having it show through. I wanted the saw blade teeth and the center board to be the cutouts. In Lightburn, under Arrange, I ungroup a few times and selected the teeth and made that part of the cutting layer by setting the color to red. For the center bore, I thought it would look better to have the bigger bore be the cutout, so I deleted the small hole and made the bigger bore part of the cutting layer as well. We can hit the preview icon to verify, and there is a problem. It should look like this and not what we see in the previews. Lightburn has a tendency to be tricky when it comes to certain projects. I will post this on the forums to better understand the issue, but for now, here's my quick fix. We need to run the engraving and the cutting as two separate tasks. Make sure the output button of the red layer is unchecked and start the process. When the engraving is done, recheck the output of the red layer and uncheck the output of the black layer. If you want more information on Lightburn and the output and show checkboxes, check out the video I made covering Lightburn. My engraving settings are 200 millimeters per second speed and 20% power. Cutting settings are 20 millimeters per second and 60% max power. This is the final product and I think it looks fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was informative. I am trying to grow the channel so your subscription and engagement would mean a lot. Don't hesitate to leave any questions you may have below. I do answer every one of them. That's all for now until next time. Later days.